All right. So hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on this lovely, we have a windy, windy Wednesday night here in New Mexico. Um, so I hope everyone's staying warm. Uh, but we're super excited to have our special guest tonight for you is Nicole Thorne. Uh, Nicole Thorne owns uh, pelvic floor secrets and she's come on tonight to share some of her wonderful knowledge in her area of specialty with all of you so without you know taking up too much of her time i'm going to just kind of turn the floor over to nicole so thanks again for joining us tonight my pleasure clarissa thank you so much well hello everybody uh, as Clarissa said, my name is Nicole. I'll just start off with telling you just a tiny bit about my background, but not a lot, okay? And then we'll get right into the nitty gritty of things, which is the reason you're here. So myself, I have been in the fitness industry, working in the fitness industry for over 30 years. So the first 15-ish years, I was the kind of coach that, like I was young, right? I was 20 years old and it was 1990s. So, <laughs> so that's my excuse. So I was like the harder, the better, like as much as possible, you know, eat as little as possible. That whole camp was where I lived, but I was also young enough to be able to withstand it at the time. But when I had my babies, so I had my first at 34 and then the second at 35. And I brought that same philosophy to my postnatal care. And that did not end well. So that was a recipe for disaster. So I worked out as hard as possible, as much as possible, did the cleanses, you know, the whole thing. It's embarrassing, but it's true. <laughs> and um, all in the name of like having to get my body back as soon as possible. And I also bought very much into like, if anyone gets their body back, it's me, a fitness professional. If anybody can like, you know, give a baby and be bounce back, it would be me. Well, I was wrong. And that was not the case. So I ended up with uncontrollable incontinence. At this, now we're talking like a 35, 36 year old woman, young woman, fitness professional already for 15 years, right? With two young babies. So, because people think this is a, something that happens to older women, mm -hmm. but it didn't, it was really, really bad. If I had a cough or anything like that, like I could not leave my house. So a 35 year old woman with a toddler and a baby, not able to leave her house. Like it's not the, what we talk about. Uh, we're starting to talk about it now, but this was definitely going on. Now I was already, I was in the fitness industry. So I did start calling myself a postnatal coach, <laughs> which now I know is not true because I was just a coach that had babies you know, but I really knew nothing about it. Uh, I knew nothing. I never heard the word pelvic floor and I didn't even know what was happening to me, but because I called myself that I ended up getting, and I lived in a large metropolitan city in, in uh, Canada. So I ended up meeting the people who then helped me to get to where I am now. Right. So now I've been working in this pelvic floor space for well over 10 years. Uh, it's probably getting closer to 15 because my oldest is turning 16. Like, that's how you know, right? What's going on? Yeah, right. Right? Because yeah. otherwise I'd be like, oh, yeah, it's been two years. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, I never had to have any surgery. I never had to, like, I'm fixed or I can manage it, you know, very, very good. And I've now helped thousands of women. It now is my mission. That's why my business is called Pelvic Floor Secrets across the board, because um, we don't talk about this, right? Like, I forget the name of the person today in your group, Marcy, I think it was, that was saying, like, she tries to say, I, I forget if that was her name, excuse me if that's not it. Um, and doctors and people that we trust say, don't worry about it. It's because you're a woman. It's normal. Well, guys, it's not normal for a grown woman to smell like pee <laughs> or not able to leave her house at 35 years old, even at 60 years old, 70 years old, right? Like that isn't meant to be. So guys, that's what's about tonight is explaining what is this missing link? What's going on and what can we do about it? So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to jump right into it. Yeah. So 
I know Clarissa, like I've been in her group, so I know you give quite a bit of um, uh, detailed information. So I'm going to go ahead and do that also. I try to usually keep things as simple as possible. So I will do that, but I'll use a couple of words since I think that that is pretty normal for your group, it seems like. So when you are talking about the core, when we're talking about the core, I'm just going to lower this so you can see a little bit better. People think that the, they understand that the core is here. And possibly they understand like it goes around like a corset like this, right? So most people have that kind of understanding. And across um, like fitness in all over the gyms, all over North America and across the world, we are all familiar with this um, um, term, brace your core, belly button to the spine, push it back. Well, here's your first test for the evening, even seated in your chair, but if you want to, you can stand up, but even seated in your chair, if you do that, if you go uh, like our belly button to spine or just push this back, you will feel a pressure in your pelvic floor down here. And that is because the very inner layer here, so it's called the transverse and the very inner muscular right layer here, it's called the multifidus. This is literally the pelvic floor is attached and you can Google this like this. It, you can see it on any anatomical um, uh, thing on Google. So the pelvic floor, I have a, a thing here, actually, the pelvic floor is everything that's red, right? Um, and it actually comes around here and attaches at the pubic bone, which is attached to the transverse. So they work together. And then in the back, same thing comes all the way back here. And then it attaches here on the multifidus. So this is the first giant missing link is this knowledge that the pelvic floor is not separate. So it's not belly button to the spine, core engagement and Kegels, and we can define Kegels if you're not sure, you can ask, see, see in the group if, if we need Kegels defined. Most people know what that is. So it, the way it's being treated is Kegels is over here separate and belly button to the spine, let's call it that, core engagement is here separate. This is not correct because these guys are actually best friends and they work together. So ladies, it's this missing link that's causing us to have issues. I will come back and go more into the details, but I wanna explain this idea to you guys. So when you take a breath in, what happens is you're supposed to, the breath is supposed to come down to the belly, fill around the side, fill the back, but what is not realized, it also gives a message to the pelvic floor. Once the pelvic floor knows breath is there, like. So we could say it got, a, it got that message. The pelvic floor automatically contracts up. When that happens, the transverse automa automatically goes like this and the multifidus all the automatically. So it works like this, boom. And on, on the inhale, it relaxes. And on the exhale, it contracts. And on the inhale, it relaxes. But here is what happens to us. We live our lives kind of like, this. Now, I know this is very exaggerated. I just want to point out to you what happens. So try that out, right? Like go like this and try to take a breath. You will see that the breath gets stuck somewhere here, right? Like some of us can get it to here. I can get it to there if I try really hard. <laughs> right. Well, guess what happens if all day or most of the day you're breathing here. So we know that that's also anxious breathing, but, but let's not, you know, go there right now. So all day you're breathing here. Well, guess what? That pelvic floor is sitting like this with nothing to do because it's never getting that message so that it can contract up and release down and contract up and work softly all day automatically all the time. So now you have this woman, right? And this is what's happening. So, and now she has a baby. It does, you don't even need to necessarily have a baby, except the baby is such a big event that changes the body anyways. So it just happens to be very common in that um, sector. So now you also have, you know, ish, the things that have happened, like, I don't want to call it trauma, but things that have happened with the pelvic floor throughout the pregnancy, right? And then, 
all of a sudden now she's back. Now it's even worse because now she's breastfeeding. Now she's like this, tired. It's like, <laughs> so the whole posture is exasperated. Um, not to mention that it was also exasperated, cost, um, compensating for the big belly, bigger breasts, and all those kinds of things. So that pelvic floor is just sitting there with nothing to do. That woman says, oh, me, I got to get back. I got to get my body back. And so I go to the gym and work as hard as possible. My pelvic floor has been dormant and it's like, what the, like, <laughs> why, why all of a sudden? Like, I'm not going to do anything. I'm sleeping over here. And now I have this uncontrollable leaking at the age that I have, right? So it's, it's a mismanagement of abdominal core pressure right? Interabdominal pressure is what we call it. It's a mismanagement of it because it's all the time in here. So the action isn't happening here the way it was actually supposed to happen innately, normally. But let's not, let's even go a little bit simpler. So just like, you know, any woman and not necessarily working out hard at the gym. So the hard working out at the gym is like a specific thing because you're there actually working and making it kind of do its thing. So it exasperates the situation a little bit quicker, but take an ordinary woman, same idea. If that pelvic floor is an, uh, essentially being dormant there, now all of a sudden this woman has to like quickly do something or, you know, she goes on a trampoline. So it's this, you know, where you really need that pressure to work for you properly, uh, the pelvic floor to engage at the right time quickly or you got to run out to traffic to like save your two-year-old or something like this, the pelvic floor isn't ready, right? Because it hasn't been doing it all day, every day. So now it's just not ready to react for you. And this is where we're running into problems. Now, sometimes women will say to me, oh, no, Nicole, like, you know, mine's not so bad. Like, I just have it once in a while. Okay, let's unpack that. If you, that's not so bad, that's fine. But let's take it down to knee pain. So let's say you have a little bit of knee pain, but you're a runner, right? And I hate running too. I don't know if you hate running. Anyways, it's just an example. <laughs> you know, runners, they'll be running on this, on this knee. They will so, run. Uh, <laughs> and they run on their pelvic floor too. But anyway, I get that digress. <laughs> so you have an ink, a little bit of a, a nag niggling with your knee, but you continue to run right? You never address it. You don't go to physio. You don't do the things you're supposed to do to fix it. Well, is that knee ever going to fix? No, it is going to get worse, worse, worse until you intervene and actually do something about it, right? Same with the pelvic floor. When you have just, it's not so bad. It's just a little bit. That's the perfect time either before or then is the perfect time to handle it because now that's just a hint. And any part of the body, if you handle it when it's just a hint, it's just a million times easier, right, Clarissa? Oh, for yeah. us to manage it. So much, from, so much easier. Yeah, yeah. From a strength training, like what we do, but also from, you know, chiro, physio, and all these guys. Mm -hmm. So it is not something to be ignored. It, it's a hint. It's letting you know something isn't right. Because as an adult woman, leaking is not okay on any level <laughs> or any amount right and we definitely do not want this so um so yeah so just in a nutshell just what i've said so far the core is actually four parts so and we're talking deep because that's what matters here in this conversation um so i'm not talking about your six-pack muscles so is front transverse back multifidus literally attached to the pelvic floor they work together synergistically um, they're supposed to work together synergistically and then we have the diaphragm on top we don't really talk much about the diaphragm because the diaphragm really has gravity in its favor the pelvic floor does not right so that's why the pelvic floor is an issue the diaphragm not so much but the diaphragm does come into effect obviously when we have tight muscles that we're releasing clarissa you were just talking about you know foam rolling and releasing muscle mm -hmm. and that definitely plays a role in this case as well right because when you have the person that's like this this has to be fixed right mm -hmm. we need to bring this back up so that when that person wakes up that breath just goes here without the person thinking about it, because in all honesty, no one is going to think about their breath and all these parts to make their pelvic floor work 
all day long. So that's where a person like people like Larissa and myself come in, like as strength training coaches, because we actually fix the body as a whole so that then it can move forward and heal itself and take care of itself and basically protect you, your organs, uh, keep your content like the body does that for you as it was supposed to, right? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it all, it all makes so much sense and it all works together and it's, it just, it gets overlooked, I think. Yeah. Well, right now, it's not something being spoken about. Like, it's not taught anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, same as you, I have all like national certifications, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, I even took now, granted, it was 15 years ago, but I did take a pre postnatal certification. Mm -hmm. Never a word about pelvic floor, which doesn't make sense because it's mm -hmm. so common for mom, like for people who have gone through giving birth that, you know, and then doctors don't know either. So doctors mm -hmm. are very good at their scope. So I'm not putting down doctors, except that they, this is not right now in their scope. Like they're not mm -hmm. being taught about it. It's like me. So I gave incorrect information too, because I did not know. Right. Um, I, I, heck, I did it to myself. I wouldn't have done that if I would have known. Um, so that's kind of what's happening. So it doesn't help when you go to your doctor, but this happens nutritionally too, oh. guys. We know this, right? Like they don't have nutritional background either. Like that's not their scope either, unfortunately. So what happens is you go to your doctor, that's who you trust. And you're like, you're shy enough, but let's say you got the guts up to say, I have this leaking problem, or I have this heaviness feeling, or I have this, or I have that, right? Like hernias, uh, hemorrhoids, all these things are in the same family, this mismanagement of pressure. Because guys, when you have this, mismanagement of pressure that I explained. So basically, instead of going like this, yours is going like either like this or something else. You know? uh, yeah. It's a mismanagement of pressure. But guess what? You're still causing that pressure because anything you do, lift your baby, uh, walk, like, you know, besides, never mind lifting, but lifting too, there's pressure being created here, no matter what, that pressure has to go somewhere. So mm -hmm. it'll go here. It causes a thing called that diastasis recti separation or uh, uh, worsens it. We can get into that if you guys want to. It goes there, so then causes all the pelvic floor issues. It also sometimes goes here. We got back issues. We got slip discs. Um, you know, all those kinds of things. I see them all the time, and uh, and hernias and all those kinds of things. They all are kind of in this same family. And what's so fascinating is when you address the core so the pelvic floor is the core as far well it's at the very least the fundamental bottom of the core right at the very least if not the core itself um but let's let's not throw everything out let's say the whole package is the core um i actually lost my train of thought Carissa, do you know where i was going with that <laughs> i'm not entirely sure um you were assessing that the pelvic floor is part of the whole core because it's the bottom of the core. Oh, yes. I remember. I remember now. So when you address this, it's so fascinating. Like I call myself a strength training coach with a pelvic floor background, but we fix everything. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you probably know this too, right? When, you, when the core is working, the only way we can make it work is by having your, your alignment in place. So now shoulder pain goes away. Back pain goes away hip pain goes away, tailbone pain, knee pain. Like it's so fascinating how everything kind of falls together. And, and we can understand that, right? Like if you get the middle or the crux of something, then everything else attached to it works so much better too, which is very exciting. It is very exciting. It's very cool how everything is attached. Um, yeah. uh, I was going to ask you a question and I lost the question. Um, Sorry. That's okay. It'll come back to me because um, yeah. I've thought of it a couple of times. Um, but as far as like exercise goes and, and the pelvic floor, I know like a lot of women are in the gym and they think that it's, you know, it's normal to have some leaking when they're, they're doing like a heavy lift. 
um, I've had women tell me it's normal. It's not normal, right? Like that is not supposed to, it doesn't matter if you're deadlifting lifting 300 pounds or 50, it should, it should not happen. Yes. Your body, if you're able to lift 300 pounds, mm -hmm. then your body should be able to react to that too. Right. Because you have the ability, the strength already to do it. So let's also bring your core along with the, along for the ride, you know? Right. So then when that happens, it's obviously, I mean, the dysfunction in the pelvic floor. And, and so if someone wanted to correct that and, and work on, you know, having that stop, is it just the breath work that they would focus on? So what happens is this, I know, you know, people, I, this is not what you're asking, but I'm going to just go take it a little bit step further because okay. what people often ask is, um, oh, give me the special exercises to do. Give me the, the few mm -hmm. things I have to do. It's actually not about that. Um, so what it is, is this, yes, we want to learn how to breathe properly so mm -hmm. that that whole core four works like this. So that is step number one. And we want to be able to integrate that natu into our movement, right? But we want that to happen naturally. How does that happen naturally? We've got to understand really what alignment means. Because sometimes when you tell somebody like fix your posture, then instead of doing this, they do this. And they do that for two reasons. They do it because they think that's what it is, but they also do it because the, the, the releases, right? So the body is so stuck. It can't work separate. Like it has to, if one piece goes back, everything goes back. So there is that aspect to it also. So we actually have to uncover that, uh, figure, like learn exactly what that means. And then what we do is we also teach proper engagement so that this is happening, right? So it's all the same thing that we, that you do, except with the breathing. And then we incorporate these things into the movement, squats, deadlifts, push-ups, this and all the, all the movements. Um, and over time, then the body takes over and does it naturally. So it's actually more how you're executing it. So we want to retrain the core, retrain the pelvic floor to come with, and it's kind of like a package deal. So it's the breathing, it's really the alignment and then strength training with that in mind, making it natural. Right. You know, and then now the body can take care of itself. Awesome. So then it's more just like correcting any other muscle imbalance. Yeah, that is really what it is. And we do the exact same thing that all of us do releases and strengthening the muscles that are weak, you know, or, or stretching what needs to be stretched to, um, to make that alignment going on. Right. No, that's amazing um, that it can be something that's that's that easy to fix when it's such a, a big problem. Well, so it's easy to you, right? But to people, yes. it's hard because they want to have three special exercises. Right. Yeah, no, I, you can go on YouTube and find that. <laughs> yes, but they won't help. So here's the thing. Um, so I'm a very big advocate of pelvic floor physiotherapy. I'm not a physio, but I work with physios. So let me explain that piece actually, because I feel, I feel like this is not understood either. So if there is an issue with the pelvic floor, right, you should go see a pelvic floor physio, hundred percent physio, just like orthopedic physio, they focus on whatever is at hand. So in this case, they focus on the pelvic floor, but like, Another one, they'll focus on the knee if it's a knee issue or they'll focus on the shoulder. Like they focus on the isolated thing, right? Which is great because we get uh, fascia release, trigger point, like we get all those things happening in that isolated area. But same as if you go and get your knee fixed, but then you're doing the exact same things you were doing before, that knee will again get into the same trouble. Same with the pelvic floor, right? So physio can fix it. But if you go back to your life and your life is this and you're lifting like this, right? You know what I'm talking about? Um, then it, it won't, that physio will undo. It's not because physio's fault. It's because you didn't, not, you, didn't, you didn't do what you're supposed to do, which is the next step. And the next step for any kind of physio, osteo, chiro, massage is a strength training coach right? And that's where somebody like us take over 
And so you get all corrected in the isolated area. So in this case, it's pelvic floor. And then we address you as a whole and fix the entire body so that the, the reason that the issue happened is no longer existing. You know, so in our case, it's usually it's bad posture or, you know, it could be an accident and things like this as well. But it's usually it's it's the posture, it's the alignment that's causing us to even get in this issue to begin with. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes it makes sense. Um, you said it, it, they could be caused by accident. We had someone in the group um, said she was in a car accident in 2015 and fractured yeah. her pelvis. Yes. Since then, my pelvic floor has been weak. When I jump on the trampoline, I tend to wear a feminine napkin because I tend to leak. What exercises can I do to strengthen my pelvic floor? So. I would have to see her, but I'm going to make just a generalized assumption here. So it may not, right? We, it's hard to do, right? Like when you have the person in front of you, you can see yes, exactly what the issue is. But let's be general. So probably what's happening is her pelvis is doing this, right? Like it's tucked under, like, let me just point out to you what happens to, no, let me, Clarissa, remind me to come back to that. I'm getting okay. off. Okay. I'm getting off. We'll come, we'll come back to the question. Yeah, okay. No, no, I'm going to answer the question. So let's okay. say her pelvis is like this, like in protection or whatever is happening. It's not uncommon. This is also a very common postnatal thing. And it's also common just with the population in general because of all the sitting we do all day long. Okay. So her pelvis is like this, right? Just, I want to point out to you what happens to my stomach if I do that actually. Right, so it's kind of like now it's loose. Like right. this has no natural tautness to it. And then mm -hmm. now I try to take a breath. My breath is here. And it just, and now I sit a ton. And now I have more tight muscles around the joints. Mm -hmm. And it just exasperates. And it's the same thing we were explaining the whole time. The pelvic floor is not getting the messages to be able to work. And over time and age and continuing to have these patterns, it just seems, well, it is getting worse, right? That is what it is. So to give special exercises, there's no special exercises. It's like release the glute so that can untuck, right? And then learn, retrain the body how to do this breathing, which you can get free, by the way, on my website. I give it for free. Um, and, um, and then strength train to make it all natural. So it all falls into the same thing, but what I wanted to explain is make it more clear, like why did that happen to her? That's why, right? It's these compensations. Accidents are a perfect time for the body to start compensating because it's in pain and it has to protect you. The body is wonderful. It protects you, but not mm -hmm. always to your advantage. Actually, usually not to your advantage, is it? No, no, <laughs> no. We spend a lot of time undoing body protection. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Now, what I wanted to point out is, so when you have, you know, the strength that you have this nice alignment where mm -hmm. your pelvis is neutral and untucked, your diaphragm is stacked on top, so it's not like this. A lot of people live here. Mm -hmm. they, they, or even like, you'll see it, right? They'll do lat pull downs and their lat pull downs are here, right? Like the, this is all lifted. That's not right. Mm -hmm. This needs to actually come down and you need to be able to bring your shoulders back separate from this, separate from the diaphragm. Right. When you're like that, the core kind of has, you can feel it. It has this like natural toutness to it. I'm not talking about holding your stomach in because that's also a mismanagement of pressure. When you're constantly going, like we used to do, you know, <laughs> always holding it in, that pelvic floor is like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> It's not doing well, you know, so that's not a good thing to do. But there is, if you're in nice alignment, there is a natural toutness that your core is, is in. So not sucking in is what I'm, but as mm -hmm. soon as I do these alignments, like, look what happens to me. Like, right. So I will often get athletic women that have had babies, but not necessarily, but this often happens when I have babies and they're lean everywhere. Right. So they say to me, like, I do like my, I have my, my strength training program. I have my, my food plan. And, you know, we check, we make sure that they are eating enough calories, but let's assume that it's all good. 
Um, and they, so they're lean here, arms are lean, legs are lean, everything looks good, except here, there's like this, they call it poochie usually, they say like the stomach is poochie or something like this, right? So we know that you can't spot reduce. So the same should be in reverse. You can't be lean everywhere and this isn't lean, but, but, right? Like I know this sometimes is a little bit slower for people, but not, not to that degree. Um, that is always, in my experience, a posture issue because I'll have a look at them and they're like this, right? So yes, your arms can be lean, your mm -hmm. back can be all cut, but you have this issue because this, I don't know if you can see that clear. Look, look at me. Yeah, I can see <laughs> you. This is loose. It's not working. It's like just kind of hanging there like this, right? right? If I untuck, like look how it looks. Mm -hmm. and, and the same thing happens with them. Now we do get into, because the muscle has been like that for a very long time, then of course the laxity has kind of like now moved in, you know, so right. it doesn't fix as quickly as mine does because I don't live there. Right. But you can still really, really clearly see the difference in the core, like right away by just lifting up and, and, and fixing what the alignment looks like. So this is also kind of a fascinating thing. And I'm sure there's tons in your group having this issue because it's very, very common. It happens to me a lot with, mm -hmm. with athletic women. Yeah, for sure. So when you're when you're showing from the side, you know, where you have like your stomach is more pushed forwards, I, ca I can't tell. Is that are you doing like a posterior pelvic tilt or, or anterior? Yeah. So there's both yep. issues. You see, so yeah, I, I know my, because my pants are black, I am yes. tucking under like this, okay. but you do have women that do also like that out. Yes. Now the minute these women, in my experience, have the worst back pain out of all of them. Oh, like they do. The, yes. And even trying to demonstrate it to you, it, mm -hmm. it hurts just even demonstrating it. You know, that one is a tough one. Uh, that one is one um, that comes up. The person usually has had it basically since birth, you know. Um, this other one is uh, often caused by um, pregnancy. You know the pregnancy waddle? You know they talk about the pregnancy waddle? Yeah. So if I tuck my pelvis under and I try to walk, I waddle. So that waddle is actually a posture thing. That's interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it so makes sense true. though. And so, so when you do the, when the body does the posterior tilt, it's trying to protect the, the pelvic floor. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe. Basically it's, it's more, I would say I, maybe it's trying to protect it or maybe it's a, uh, um, just a tightening of the muscles around the joints, you know? Right. And then plus all the sitting that we do. Um, and then like when it comes to pregnancy, there is a compensation happening because there's so much weight all of a sudden in front of your body that you're not used to. Mm -hmm. So you might tuck, it's more like compensating, yeah. you know? Yeah, definitely. Then, but I mean, I don't know, possibly that could be as a protection mechanism. I don't know that, maybe could be. All right. Awesome. Um, okay. Well, I don't know. Let's see. We don't have any questions here in the group. Um, we have quite a few people on Facebook, but no more questions. So if someone wanted to work on, you know, restoring function to the pelvic floor and getting that, that working properly, I mean, obviously that is not something I specialize in, but where could they find you, Nicole, to help with that? So I am found pelvic floor secrets um, on the website. It's .ca. Unfortunately, I couldn't get .com, but it's called that everywhere. Like my Facebook group, my Instagram and whatever. Uh, obviously I do do training like full on one-on-one -on -one training, but I also have a little DIY program. That's especially for people who are either a coaches or B already have a coach because their coach like you can take care of the strength training portion like that's what we do like we fix alignment and this right yes. um and and so this diy just sort of fills in those p 
pieces that are missing. So what it does exactly is it goes over the breathing, it shows you proper alignment, it shows you engagement, and then it shows you how to integrate that into the main lifts, into the primal movements, squats, deadlifts, push-ups. So that's what I normally will give to somebody who already has a coach because, you know, you're not going to have two coaches or two strength training programs, you know? So that's an option. Okay. That's amazing. I didn't know you had that product. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Really, really good. Yeah. Well, it happens a lot. I built it especially because people fall in love with their coaches and they, yep. their coaches has the ability to help them with the other part. So I just wanted to give that part, you know, okay. well, that's awesome. And they can find that on your website or. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And that's the, it was the do it yourself product. Yeah. It's called foundation program. I know I need a better title. Okay. <laughs> right. No, I just want to make sure they can find it if they want to. So is the foundation yeah. program. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And, um, once we get finished here, I'll go ahead and tie your website into the into the Facebook um, video so that they have. Uh -huh. Just be sure you put .ca. It's a Canada thing. Oh, okay, um, instead of .com. Yeah, .com, which is super annoying, but yeah, it's so it's pelvicfloorsecrets.ca. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Um, all right, let me check one more time. And people yeah. can always ask questions later, right? Like yeah. we're yeah. both yeah. on your um, post that you did today. Yes. And no uh, if they tag me, then I'll, it'll pop up on my phone. I'll happily answer questions. Awesome. Well, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. Great. So thank you so much for joining us tonight, Nicole. I hope that everyone you <laughs> learned something and was able to take away something of value tonight. I certainly have. Um, and like Nicole said, she does have that foundational product that if you're working with us, we'd be happy to help you with that as well, too. And yeah. you know, get everything functioning like it should, because there is only so much that that I or any of my coaches can do, because that's not our area of, of expertise. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, that that's exactly what that's for. Awesome. All right. Awesome. There's awesome. Yeah, there's a thank you. Well, well, great. I hope to see you soon. Maybe like, you know, at the seminar or something, we'll see each other. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Nicole. We'll have to My have pleasure. you on again at a later date. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.